Every home has a unique story to tell. A story of what was before and what came after. And the story from B to A is the most exciting one of all. We're about to see if these architects, builders and owners can transform these home dreams into reality. This is Before and After. In this episode of Before and After, we find out what makes a house into a home. We follow the build of this family house with a view and plenty of personal touches. We're on the northern beaches of Sydney where around every corner you're greeted with sights like this. And here in North Curl Curl up on the hill, the views are worth every cent. Tom meets Paul from Peninsula Homes, who have just the plan to take advantage of this beautiful outlook. What a sight, what a great perspective. Yeah, it's a fantastic sight. The outlook is beautiful. This is a big block, mate. It's a very big block. It's probably about twice the size of a normal block in the area. Are we talking about a big home as well to go with the big block? Well, it's enough of a home, but it doesn't um, use the whole block. The owners didn't want to build a huge home. Yep. that they couldn't live in forever. So when kids move on and things like that, they really wanted to have something that felt like home. What was the existing house like, the old time? Well, it was a 50, 60 year old small cottage. Um, when the owners moved here about four years ago, it was very, very run down, overgrown, barely livable as such, but they always had the vision of knocking down and rebuilding. And were they adamant about what they wanted? Did they thought long and hard about the, the style of house, how it was gonna work for them? They were quite set on some of the aspects, but a lot of it in terms of style and design, they gave over to us. Great. Um, so they wanted to have a, a lower area for their older sons that could be separate from the rest, um, have a upstairs area that was all their own, and then a middle area that was more for family use and entertainment. To achieve the right look and feel here, the material choice is very important. The brickies are into it right now and I can see you using a bit of uh, recycled brickwork. Are they yes. going to be like a feature in the house? Yeah, they will be a feature. Yeah. So base some areas of the outside with the cladding and also a big spine wall through the stairwell. They're from a reclaimed brickyard. Great. Um, so often factories and things when they're demolished, yep. reused and we get that one lot so it keeps that keeps the right look of the, the brick. Is it about everyone's in love with the brick again? Low maintenance is what everyone wants right. from us. So this okay. client wants to live here until they're old and grey yep. and doesn't want to have to be repainting render, whereas these bricks are just going to settle in to the house and the idea is in 10, 20 years' time, the home just lives with the block yeah. and, and looks just as good as it, when it was new. It's not only the recycled brick that has the reused story here, this site, just like the whole of Sydney, sits on top of sandstone and Paul plans to embrace the rock. And the client's really confident with some quirky inclusions and things like that. And we've got some sawn sandstone. You're going to be able to see from inside the downstairs area. Great. And also things like we're going to cut a wine cabinet out of that bedrock. So drill holes in the sawn sandstone to store the wine actually inside the rock. For us also, it's the, the lived-in nature yeah. already of the house. It's it's. Although it's a, a showpiece house with a beautiful view, yep. it's going to have that homely feel. After the break, the house starts to take shape. And later we reveal the finished home, complete with some inspirational personal touches. We're in North Curl Curl on the northern beaches of Sydney to follow the build of this family house. There's been a lot of progress in the past three months and the house is really starting to take shape and with the height now reached, the views can be realised and good design always reaps the rewards. It's been interesting at this stage of the job to arrive on site and see a lot of the smaller things that we've done taking effect. One in particular has been the 
ensuite window. I always wanted the ensuite window to be clear glazed so that you could take in the view. And now that it's built, it's worked out perfectly that the roof below it extends out over the back balcony and gives you privacy from the lower neighbours. The good design also needs to be open to change. The evolution of the rock continues. We've been able to overcome and work with the rock under the house. Um, in the original part, we saw cut that a lot, and now more and more that's going to be exposed from inside the home. And owner Fran is loving the process, taking every opportunity to use the land and highlight its natural beauty. As we went down and cleaned it off, we've just gone, this is amazing and we just want to see it. So hence we've got the window in downstairs, it just goes out onto the rock. We're going to have that lit up and we've even just spoken this morning about having the stairs go down and how good the rock is there and maybe having some windows so we can actually look out onto the stairs and the rock. We bought this house about three years ago. We got the we got the land really with a three sort of kind of shack on it. That we managed to turn into quite a nice little home at not a lot of cost. And then we decided to look at whether we'd renovate. We knew we wanted to use the slope and to go downstairs and to put something up so that we could see the ocean. We looked at costs of doing that, phoned up a couple of builders, re renovating, and they said, actually, you know, if that's what you're going to do, you just need to knock the thing down. There's no point working with an old house. Then, when we got a few costs in, we thought, you know, we, we could actually move for that amount of money, but we just couldn't find it anywhere with this kind of space and this openness. So we bit the bullet and we said, no, we're going to rebuild here because there's nothing else, you know, that you can't get this space here in this location. A big part of the front of the house is going to be the landscaping and there's actually going to be a small courtyard at the front of the home. This is the northern aspect, so in winter time they'll be able to enjoy that winter sun. The cladding that we're using on this home is a James Hardy Axon 133. We've used this product a lot in the local area. The look of it works with the modern homes, easy to install, and the, the finish is something that our clients like. The whole thing about the house is it's evolving and you don't know until one part's in how you can make that better or what effect it's going to have. And the joy of these guys is that they seem to have great ideas and they work with us and we work with them on it so it's really evolving and it's just going it's just going leaps and bounds ahead and it's going to look really amazing when it's finished I can't wait after the break the finish line is in sight and later we reveal the finished home in all its glory We're in North Curl Curl on the northern beaches of Sydney to follow the build of this family home. Paul brings us up to speed on the progress. So from last time we were here, um, we had scaffolding up and we're just starting to clad the house. We've moved on from there, we've started to paint the upstairs, so we've been able to remove the scaffolding. The roof is now finished, the house is becoming watertight now. The electricians and plumbers are in on the site and we're about two weeks away from having Jiproc installed. A lot of the homes that we build on the northern beaches of Sydney are clad homes, lightweight construction. This works very well to dissipate the heat from a summer's day, and then with the way that we insulate and construct the walls, it also works well in the winter to retain that warmth inside. This particular home has a suspended concrete slab. The lower area of this house, facing south, doesn't receive the warming sunlight that the rest of the house will. So rather than building that area in all brick walls, which tend to, once they get cold in winter, stay very cold, almost like a fridge effect, lightweight cladding in that area will not retain that cold and allow the insulation to function very well. And then the heating inside will actually be a lot more effective. The original design brief was obviously made up of a number of different parts. Two of the larger, more relevant parts were that the house was to be understated from the street, but then it was to open up and expand as you walked inside and really open up towards the big rear view. So as you walk through the house, the house steps down 
with the slope of the land, the ceilings get higher, the windows get bigger, and you walk in and say, wow, look at that amazing view. There's been a number of interesting things that we found to go into this home. Steve was actually at a locksmith, a local locksmith, and found an old safe that was sitting in the locksmith. And the suggestion went out to David, would you be interested in finding somewhere for this safe in your home? And that's now developed to that safe, a grand, old, large safe, being pride of place in the kitchen. And David's gonna use that as a spirits cabinet, as an addition to their one-off kitchen. One of the custom elements that's been in the home right from the start is recycled Harbour Bridge scaffolding timbers used as a floating TV cabinet. This was always designed to go on the recycled brick wall and be a big feature of the home. Since then, the talking to Fran and David and wanting to use that timber in other parts of the home, Fran found a freestanding mirror, a large 2.4 high by 1.2 metres wide mirror in a shop and asked us whether we'd be able to commission that to be built from the same Harbour Bridge timbers. And also, we're going to build a one-off light fitting to go above their dining room table in the same timber. And doing this will really give continuity to the one-off design of the home, things that are built into that home, as well as furnishings done from the same timber. Well, not long now. After the break, we can finally reveal the finished home. On a beautiful autumn day in Sydney, Tom catches up with Fran and David for a tour of the finished home. How's the whole construction process been? It's actually been quite fun. You know, you kind of go into these things and we thought long and hard about it and we expected it to be quite hard and tricky, but it's been a breeze. We'd do it again tomorrow if we could. Were you happy with just limiting the amount of area that the house took up on the, on the block or were you inclined to, you know, make it bigger? What we wanted to build was a home and we wanted to build the home with the right people that understood our vision and actually understood it. So the importance for us is not building a house just to get square meterage, yeah. it's to build the space that we needed. We entertain a lot, we, we love the environment and the view, so we wanted to encapsulate those. And having two oh, 20 and 23 year old sons, we wanted to give them an area that they could enjoy as well. Mm. And it's a question that's been asked, why don't you build further? We wanted a home and not a house. In the original brief for the home, there was really three key elements that I've had in my mind the whole time. One was that the home was um, unobtrusive from the street. Secondly, was the initial feel when you walked in the front door of the home and the home opened up in size as you walked in. And then the other one is the three distinct areas. The upstairs for David and Fran, the private area with a nice ensuite and bedroom taking the view. This ground floor area to be the hub of the home and the central area to entertain. And then the lower area for their sons has all worked perfectly and it's immensely satisfying to see that come together. I must say also for a couple, you've certainly looked after your near adult children yeah, <laughs> their I know, own I know. spaces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my only concern down there is my wine cellar's right next to one of their bedrooms, so uh, I'm just have to put a good lock on that door. I mean, that's yeah. history, <laughs> let me tell you. I mean, these two boys play in bands too, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. So just yeah. kiss that goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we keep the good stuff upstairs. So the sandstone, the bedrock sandstone, was sawn in the original excavation and Steve came across an image, an idea, actually text messaged it to me and said, what do you think about this? And it was of core holes drilled in to become a wine cellar. I sent that off to David. He sent back, love it. So then we actually had to work out how to do it on our job. So we went through that, went through the process, designed it all up. Um, worked out the most efficient way to do it and David just thinks that's fantastic. It's now got a light on it and full of his treasured red wine.
I think one of the key things, speaking and working with, with Peninsula, was getting as much light in. Um, other considerations, obviously, are, are heating and cooling. Um, Which you don't have. None no. at all. None right. at all. So having slab and brick helps, obviously, with our thermal loads and, and helping control the internal temperature. If it gets too warm, the windows have been designed by the team to, to allow the cross breezes to, to allow us to, to naturally ventilate. And when it's cold, we just shut the doors. We've double glazed a lot of the windows as well. And that actually retains the temperature. We've got gas points. We've had some cold mornings since we've been in here. We haven't used mm. them. Yeah, great. So the bulk of the house uses James Hardy Axon cladding, um, which is a lightweight sheet cladding. We find it fantastic to work with. Um, very fast and efficient and also the properties of that cladding over and above a conventional brick home. Um, particularly the lower ground floor on this home. We're standing on here on the ground floor which is a suspended slab. Generally a lower construction under a suspended slab is double brick to take the weight of that. Um, but here facing south I didn't want to do that in the design. I wanted to utilise the, the properties of a clad wall um, so that it doesn't get very cold in winter and doesn't get too hot in summer and it'll actually dissipate the heat when it does. We had a section in the frame design just near the kitchen that was put down for ducting and pipe work to run through behind the walls. Steve was one day in the local locksmith and saw a safe in the corner, an old safe in the corner and again suggested using that in the house. And it was actually quite a small safe. David loved the idea, go for it boys. And one day I went into the back room of the locksmith, measured up that tiny little safe, and there was another even older safe in the back corner of the back room of the locksmith. And I said, how about that one? And he said, oh, what that thing, we haven't done anything to it. It's all just original, it hasn't even been painted up yet. I said, I want that one. And this recycled timber as well tells an interesting story well, of Sydney history. It, it's fantastic. We've tried to embrace as much of Sydney history as possible. The bricks have come from Sydney property, all recycled. The timber was used as scaffolding on the Harbour Bridge uh, around about 1940. And uh, what Stephen Paul did is actually fashioned a light feature and also some shelves and some other elements of the actual property from the timber. And some of it, if you look closely, even still has RTA stamped mm -hmm. in it. So very clever use of recycled materials. We check in with Eamon from Tradelink to see what's trending right now in kitchens, bathrooms and laundries. Well, the trends are always changing in our, in our industry. We're seeing a, probably a bigger trend at the moment with porcelain tiles. You know, big porcelain tiles create that sense of space. Metallic tapware, we're starting to see a, an emergence of that again. So coppers um, and also obviously the matte blacks are very popular at the moment. So one of the things we're seeing of great uh, interest in is the um, acryl sheeting. It's a, an image or a, or a colour that's, uh, that has a perspex overlay. We've got you know, forest scenes and we've got the New York skyline, or if you want, you can put your own photos behind there and personalise it. Uh, and it comes in a variety of sizes as well. The surfaces that we're seeing in our bathrooms now, you know, stone, um, marble or timber. You know, timber softens the room and it just creates that sense of um, warmth whereas the stone surfaces tend to be a little bit more structured, a little bit more formal, so you've got a lot of variety in, in your different surfaces that you use in your bathrooms as well. If you need some advice, our showroom consultants are all trained in, in the products that we sell, so pop in, get some friendly advice from our team, and they'll be happy to help you out. For the features and the, the, the benefits of the property, um, we've spent around about a million dollars here. Um, we priced it, we knew that we would go 10 or 15% over, not because of um, provisional sum blowouts, but more because of the, the things that we changed mm -hmm. as we went through. And that was a great flexibility from the builder when we suddenly decided we wanted to change something, it happened. The other day, Fran was just about to move in here and we reminisced a little bit and it seemed like such a short time ago that they were sitting in their old house and it was amazing when Fran spoke to me and talked about the leap of faith that they made to actually build a new home because we come in and 
demolish the home that they're living in, take a set of plans out and start construction. To Steve and I, it's all okay because it's under control and we understand the process, but for our clients, it is genuinely a leap of faith. And they made that leap and we've traveled through 12 months of construction and to see them here now, living and making it a home and loving it, it is just so genuinely rewarding for Steve and I. It's amazing. Here's a home that sits beautifully on the block and it takes advantage of the outlook and the environment to achieve not only sustainability, but that special wow factor. It uses recycled materials and natural elements to find that homely, understated feel that the owners were looking for and allow the evolution of personal touches along the way. It's a culmination of these things that has made this house into a lovely home for the owners now into the future.